It is a Gore-Tex fabric, which means it's waterproof, it is breathable, which means it allows moisture to escape out. It is windproof, um, but when we dive into it, the what we say is Gore-Tex is actually three different components. So you have the face fabric, in this case the gray material, which is custom, and I'm going to drive into that in just a second, but that face material is then glued or laminated to the gore membrane. It's a white Teflon membrane, so you have face fabric glued to that. And then you have a third barrier, which is this gray stuff on the inside, it's called Trico. In a factory, it's, or a, it's spelled T-R-I-C-O-T. -T. So all three of these have a fairly significant story. So let's start with the, with the face fabric. So nylon, all nylon, not just this nylon, nylon starts off as a liquid. Think of it as, as jello. As it cools, it hardens. And the way that process is, they run it through a jet uh, or a, uh, what looks like a, just a little tiny hole or a pore, and it hardens out and solidifies. And it looks like when they're making cotton candy. That's literally the process of what it looks like. So just like premium knife makers can take good steel, put it in the forge, drop it in the cold water, you know, and shape it. That tempering process to metal, you can do the same thing to nylon. So this is heat treated nylon or tempered nylon. And that tempering process takes good nylon and makes it exceptional by giving it greater tear strength, giving it stronger seams, and giving it more resistance to abrasion. So that's that's just the face fabric. Um, what what you're when you go to the store and you're buying sheets and they call it thread count in fabric lingo we call it maximum construction. So if I had a microscope or a loop and I put it on here, you would see fibers going this way, warp fibers, and then the fibers intersecting that are called weft or fill fibers. Maximum construction basically packs those things in there super tight, so it's super dense, a la uh, high thread count. So we have a maximum constructed, heat treated or tempered nylon face, and that's what makes this thing initially incredibly durable. The membrane, the Gore-Tex product that it's laminated to is called XCR. So Gore is kind of like Coca-Cola where you have Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Lime Coke, Cherry Coke, Diet Coke, Caffeine Free Coke, all being variants of brown, sugary flavored waters. Gore is kind of the same, same way you have Pack Light, Performance Shell, Pro Shell, XCR, Wind Stopper. So you have these various models all under the Gore brand. In this case, this is Gore XCR, which is their their military spec product. What makes this product different than the outdoor products like the Alpha SL uh, that we sell is this product has uh, been basically tuned for industrial use. So in speaking in my analogies, you've got a, a Ford Ranger pickup and a Ford F-350. Both of them are pickup trucks. One is easy to park and easy to whip around town. One is incredibly a pain in the butt to park, but it can tow a bulldozer. That's what this is. This Gore product is specifically formulated for a guy who is wearing it professionally day after day after day, is not washing it. This, this membrane can absorb and deal with all the sweat and oil and salt that comes off his body, stuff for sharpening knives and cleaning weapons, stuff that goes into fuel vehicles, stuff that's designed to keep bugs away or keep the sun from damaging your skin. Any petrochemical, whether it's coming off your skin or applied to your skin or, or put into your gun, 
this, this membrane is designed to deal with that. So we have a custom face fabric. We have Gore's mill spec membrane. And then this third layer in here, this Trico barrier, which does two really important jobs. The first one is that it protects that Gore membrane if it gets slammed and jammed into a buckle um, on your backpack. The Trico also protects if I've got a rough textured Glock frame or a 1911 with scaled grips, uh, it protects that expensive component of the Gore membrane or the Gore jacket. The third or the second piece that this does is it takes and deals with moisture that let's just say it's coming off of my body so I'm sweating and this stuff my body the sweat that comes off my body in the form of just moisture this stuff takes it and does what a squeegee does to this floor to a tennis court it spreads that moisture over a broader area in it and it basically allows my body heat to dry it up so it masks the moisture so in just a second here you'll see that that moisture has started to basically go into the the weave or the in this case really the knit and it starts to spread out it's if you look down it under a loop it looks like a terry loop robe um, or a, a smart wool sock. So it's designed to take that moisture and start to, to wick it away. So if you guys feel it, you can still, you can still feel it there a little bit, but it starts to spread that moisture over. So, so backing it up, you have this face fabric that is super durable. It's heat treated. It's maximum constructed. It's, it's the Ford F350 of face materials. So you have this gore membrane that is specked out with these oleophobic filters, oil hating filters, that's designed for exceptional industrial professional use with all sorts of oil you know, getting and trying to contaminate it. And then you have this third layer, this Trico barrier uh, that's protecting that expensive core membrane. So these three pieces are all glued together to become one Product, what we call three layer gore XCR. So three pieces, three layer gore, and then the XCR is the, is the barrier. So that's just the fabric. Then you start getting into design and then you get into the quality. So the design cues on the jacket, we used to do an alpha and then an alpha parka, and it became really kind of confusing. So we just made one and we kind of split the difference. So it used to be Alpha and Alpha Parker. There were six inches difference, so we reduced it down. So one cut. The pockets, chicken wing pockets, are up high and out of the way of rucksacks and hip belts. You have Velcro for unit identifiers, flags, American flags. You have a bicep pockets. So you can put your right in the rain notebooks in there, you can put your cell phone, you can put your dip cans, whatever you want in there. Um, for these pockets, the, the chest pockets, they also have pass-through ports on the inside, so you can be running your, for me it'd be running my, my iPhone and changing the music, <laughs> but for other people it might be working electronic gizmos. So you've got the ability for the pass-through ports there. Then you have laminated pockets right here on the inside. Keep your creds or, or a power bar in there. Draw cords are rerouted. Normal draw cords you pull down and it dangles, which gets in the way of holsters and gun parts. And so these are rerouted, so it doesn't get in the way of that stuff. The hood on this thing is designed um, to fit over a helmet. If you, if you have a helmet on, or if you're not wearing a helmet, it zips away into the high collar. The great thing about the hood, though, is how much volume control you have over it. So the first thing you're going to notice is the hood is actually a different fabric. And that's the, because hoods generally don't see as much of use as down here. So you can probably see the difference. So this is the Alpha LT material versus the heavy duty material. So it's a lighter face fabric and you can probably see the difference in the interior. So this is actually Gore 
ProShell laminated to a microgrid backer versus XCR laminated to the Trico backer. This is just lighter and it, and it packs down easier. The beauty of this, now this jacket's a medium and I'm not a medium, but I'll show you what it looks like on the, on the hood. The hood is big enough to fit over a helmet. Hmm. So lots of volume in there, which is great if you're wearing a helmet, not great if you're just bald. So there are two draw cords in the back, the bottom one and the top one. This bottom one right here pulls that, pulls this up and out of the way. That second cord right here is like pulling your ponytail back. And then to keep the Dumbo ears from happening, So for a lot of people who hate hoods because they've never had a hood that works this good. So you don't have to redo this every time. You can just take the hood and drop it and then put it back on. It works if the if this is open or if it's closed. It's designed to have enough volume in front of it when it's zipped up so you can still use it. So that's the, going through the feature sets on the jacket. One other thing, even though this is a breathable membrane, you have to remember gore only breathes at the molecular level. So right now our bodies are producing insensible moisture. If we crank the, it up five or eight degrees in here, or if we just started walking around, we would start to feel a little bit of that moisture. Well, no, no jacket, no membrane can breathe as fast as your body respires. So it's not a miracle. So we put in things like pit zips to allow you to instantly open up the jacket to regulate temperature, to dump out some heat and dump out some moisture. One thing that people often ask me when I'm, when I'm, you know, going through and having conversations, you know, kind of give the the parameters, or they usually ask like, well, what temperature should this be used at? The challenge with that is sitting down watching a Redskins game in 32 degree weather is completely different than hiking with a 40 pound pack in 32 degree weather. So we don't give a temperature rating, nor do we give any kind of limitations because what, what a, an FBI agent in the field office in Miami needs in February is going to be different than the guy in Kansas City or Seattle. So it's a little hard to put direct parameters as to what time of year, because other things like environmental concerns, level of activity, terrain, where you are in the world, throw in, get thrown into that mix. Gore-Tex works on one simple premise that the macroclimate outside, if it is cold and dry, a la Salt Lake City or Denver, and what's inside my coat, the microclimate within my clothing system is laden with moisture and hot. Hot and moist inside, cold and dry outside, there's a big differential. Gore-Tex works miraculously. It's amazing. If what's inside is warm and moist, and I'm in Miami, and it's hot and moist, There's no differential. So that's one of the things right now, one of, I heard a company talking about how their fabric breathes cool air in. Well, what if it's hot outside? I mean, you know, so this is not a miracle jacket. Sometimes an umbrella is a good thing to have. Um, when it's, when you're in the Everglades, uh, an umbrella is better than a Cortex jacket. Or maybe you need both of them. Um, so a couple things on the Arcteryx, how we, how we craft things and how we build them. This is a key selling point, is the quality of the materials and how it's all put together. So this hood, this pit zip, this zipper 
on the bicep, this zipper on the jacket, this bottom hem, this wrist line hem, all these share a process that came out of a rock climbing harness, transferred into backpacks and into manufacturing vortex, which is a process of laminating unlike parts together, getting them to stick and getting rid of a traditional cutting, sewing, and then taping on top of it. So this is actually all laminated together. And it's easy to see right here where there's a draw cord right through here, but there's no stitch lines. So that is actually laminated into the jacket. And then you look at this zipper and this zipper, and it's really easy to see when you go inside and you look at that, it's laminated in, it's not stitched in. So we've got a box out there where we, we have a little scrap bin when they stop stitching and, and when they trim these things down you don't you end up not carrying a baggie of you know excess material. So this is all not all of it's laminated but the zippers and the hood and the hem at the wrist and the hem at the, at the waistline are all are all laminated in. And this process saves weight. And then we also do a process where we we die cut bunch of the components here and it gets rid of a traditional manufacturing method of shingling. So, so take the logo here. Whenever you punch a hole in a Gore-Tex jacket, like where this panel and this panel are, are mated together, that's a stitch line right there. So you have to put, you have to fill those holes in on the back with this seam tape. So when you move to this logo, we've embroidered, so we, we punched holes through the jacket. We have to then seal that back up to make it waterproof. So traditional ways, you would take actually a wider tape than this. You'd take one inch tape and you would backfill and tape over that. So you would have usually three layers or four layers of shingled tape over that. Well, what we do is we die cut this. We round off the edges so they're less likely to to peel away and get snagged on other items. And so we die cut this tape and this piece, which is right here on the on the zipper garage. The zipper garage is as you would suspect, it just it's where you park your zipper and it's a little heat treated, heat molded piece that doesn't flap down. Uh, but so we've got the zipper garage die cut, the logo piece die cut, the reinforcement juncture there is die cut. That little piece is die cut. This whole pocket is die cut. The reinforcing pieces here at the bottoms of the uh, pocket are die cut. We die cut there where the uh, pit zippers are, are sewn in, or excuse me, glued in. We die cut this piece here, which is the channel for the uh, cord lock and the, and the draw cord. And this process just makes it so that you're not just kind of chunky style piecing things together or, you know kind of duct taping it together theoretically it's just a more elegant better way to put it together it saves weight the other thing we do is is we trim our seams and which means we're also allowed to use a narrow gauge seam tape so to illustrate what happens when you bring two two pieces of fabric together you can't, you can't just kind of wound stitch it, that's not very strong, you can imagine it pulls apart. So the way that it works is you take two pieces of material and you bring them together and you stitch them one time in the middle and typically they lay one down and they stitch it again. So there's a blind stitch that you can't see and then a top stitch that you can't see. This piece, now obviously I made a big, a big piece here. This ridge in between where, where this juncture is and this, this is called the seam allowance. Typical seam allowance in most products that you would buy at an outdoor store is a quarter of an inch. 
we started trimming ours to an eighth of an inch and then we got down to a sixteenth of an inch. So this allows us to use less tape and there might be 15 or 18 feet of tape in this jacket through all the seams. So when you trim tape half, you've got half the amount of tape, which means overall the jacket is more breathable. Because whenever you have tape on top of this, you lose some breathability in that Gore-Tex. So this is, you can probably see this little piece here. This is a 16th inch seam allowance with micro seam tape on top of it and then that's the exterior that's what it's covering that's a blind stitch so the tape actually becomes a part of the structure because it is glued on and holding on both sides of the fabric on this piece and on this piece so you have a stitch and then two pieces of, of uh, surface glue or two pieces of the surface are glued together so so when you start talking about piecing this all together, you got a great material story with custom face fabrics, the best spec mill, mill spec gore material, and this Trico backer that protects and acts as moisture management. So you got a great fabric story, and then you got an awesome design story with a hood that works on a bald head or a or a toboggan or a or a helmet and it can be stored away if you're not using it all. You got pockets up high and out of the way so they're not the way of wearing a backpack or a duty belt or a sub belt. You've got pass-through ports for comms equipment or just playing your music on your, when you're riding the train. You got rerouted draw cords so they don't get in the way of holsters and other, other equipment. Um, you got places for your patches and, and unit identifiers. You got dip can pockets on the sleeves. Uh, so you got a whole suite of, of features that are designed for the, the end user that's wearing this thing professionally. And then you have a quality story. Um, manufacturing by the minute is how this is, this is timed. And so when you, when you go through and, you, and you're talking about everything from unraveling the material on the cutting tables to sewing the parts together. The hood is sewn as a separate unit from a right arm to a left arm to the front panels to the back. It's all in a big Henry Ford industrial process. Um, most Gore-Tex jackets um, have about 180 minutes of sewing and manufacture time in this. Uh, and that's because they kind of rush through the process. What makes an Arcteryx jacket so special is the care and feeding to go into it. And you've got, uh, you've got about five hours of, of build time into this. And part of that is any time that you, that you glue seam tape or laminate in zippers, we have a special machine that we build the actual machine where you apply the, the glue and then you do a cold press and then a hot press again and then a second cold press and that that process basically makes it super super clean so you got a fabric story a design story and a quality story and that's the sum of the parts is a is a amazing jacket as steve said it's it's the the, the platinum standard to which everything else is uh, is compared to so that's the uh alpha jacket from the leaf collection Beautiful.